So recently, Adobe released D-Noise, their AI noise reduction in both Lightroom and Camera Raw. But how does it compare to other noise reduction software that's been out on the market for quite a while now and people like you and me are paid good money for? Software like Topaz, DxO, On One and Luminar. Let's find out. Okay, so Adobe's D-Noise came out recently and there's definitely been a mixed reaction. Some folks like me getting great results, some experiencing a few crashes, some saying it takes a really long time to process, and some not even being able to make use of it due to their current computer not being powerful enough to support it. Now, Adobe D-Noise apparently uses artificial intelligence and the interface couldn't be more simple and straightforward. Unlike some of the other software available, it only works on raw files and there's just an amount slider and a preview area. So let's do a comparison with other noise reduction software using this portrait here that I took of a World War II veteran, squadron leader Eric Robinson. This is the final edit and this is the original raw image which you can see was shot at an ISO of 1250. If I zoom in on the raw image, you can see there's definitely noise visible in the shadow areas. And you can also see how that noise has affected detail in the clothing and on his face. So let's kick off then with the raw file open and I'll go to the detail tab in Lightroom and choose D-Noise. As soon as I do, this window opens up and straight away Lightroom gets to work, giving me a preview of what the noise reduction would look like using the default setting of 50. Now it only takes a moment or two before we get to see the preview, which we can click down on and release to see a before and after, and also click and drag around to see different areas of the picture. This works fine, but I wish it had a smaller thumbnail included too that you could tap down on or drag the magnifier around to move to that part of the picture quicker, much like we have the navigator in Lightroom when we zoom in. Instead, you click on the minus to zoom all the way out, and then tap on the area you want to zoom back in. But anyway, you can see that even at the default settings, this has given a great result. The noise has definitely been reduced, but it's done really well to still maintain the texture in the canvas effect background I was using. Also, the detail in the hair, face, and the skin looks great. The detail is definitely still there. It looks sharp and not smoothed out, which can happen when reducing noise. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that now and then I'll press Enhance. Before I do, you can see here an approximation of how long it will take to process. So I'll click on Enhance. When I do, we get back into Lightroom and we can see the progress bar in the top left as Lightroom creates a DNG copy and applies denoise to that rather than our original raw file. And here is the process result, which does look really good. Okay, so I'll now drag this file into this noise reduction folder here that I've made. Next, let's try Topaz D-Noise, which I think it's fair to say is currently the most popular noise reduction software. So I'll go to Photo, Edit In, Topaz Noise AI. Now Topaz Noise AI isn't just limited to working on raw files, so I'll open this up in Topaz D-Noise as a TIFF with Adobe RGB color space and high quality settings. Then I'll click on Edit. So when Topaz opens, I'll go to Split View so I can move this vertical divider to see the before and after. The original image on the left of the line and the noise reduction version on the right hand side of the line. There's also this Magnify View which I really like so you can quickly move to a portion of the image. We have a few options we can choose from. We have Standard, Clear, Low Light, Severe Noise and Raw and I can click on compare to see what each of them will do. Now when I do that, straight away I can see that each does give different results. But what's really interesting is this. If I go to the side of the head, you can see in each of them how the texture on the background seems to disappear. And in the severe noise option, it's completely gone. I'll go to single view, then turn on this option here to automatically use the recommended model for this image. We also have this model preference here. If I turn it on, it will detect the recommended settings for this image, controlling the remove noise and enhance sharpness sliders. In fact, when we do that, the clothing here has definitely lost all of its texture. 
and the hair almost looks like brush strokes. But anyway, I'll click on apply so that processes the image and send it back into Lightroom. Now that's done, I'll give it a color label, let's go for red, and then I'll drag it into the noise reduction folder. Okay, next let's try DxO. You'll notice that doesn't appear as an option in the photo menu, and we actually need to go to File, Plugin Extras, and then Process in DxO Pure Raw 3. When I choose that, it opens up the DxO Pure Raw 3 software, and we get to choose which raw processing and denoising technologies to use. Now, DxO Pure Raw only works on the original raw state of the image, so any adjustments made will be removed, and then it does the processing. You can see here when I hover over the question mark that Deep Prime produces breathtaking results, which sounds great, but Deep Prime XD is a more powerful version producing enhanced details, but will take longer to process. We don't get to see any before and after preview, but just choose the output options. So I'll choose to have it produce a DNG, just like the Lightroom Denoise did, and also have it to save back into Lightroom. Now it doesn't take long to process, and when it does, it creates a new folder called DxO, and here's the processed raw file that you can see no longer has the initial edits on it. So I'll drag this file into the folder with the original raw file, and I'll sync the edits so we can look at the results of the DxO noise reduction. So I'll give this one a yellow label and drag that into the noise reduction folder. Let's now take a look at On1. I'll go to Photo, Edit In, and choose On1 No Noise AI 2023. And just like Topaz, On1 can work on both RAW and other file formats. Once in On1 No Noise, the default settings are applied, and like Topaz, we can move this vertical bar to see the original on the left and the processed version on the right, and we can move it around to see the results in different areas. To me though, the results look too processed, too sharp, but also seems to add a painterly, waxy kind of look to the skin, and the hair almost looks like brush strokes. It's also removed the original texture off the background. Now I can change the AI model used from original to high detail, but that now looks way overdone. Look at how that's affected the skin on the cheeks being over sharpened. There's also the option to use the Tack Sharp AI software with the No Noise software by choosing both. But again, that looks over processed. I'll just choose No Noise and Original and click on Done. That sends it back into Lightroom, so I'll give this one a blue label and drag it into the Noise Reduction folder. Lastly, we have Luminar Neo. So I'll send that over as a TIFF. And once open, I then go to Edits and Noiseless AI. Luminar Neo recommends the AI model to use, which in this case, it tells me to use the Low option. It then does this fake AI display animation type of thing, which is cool the first time you use it, but then does get a little bit tedious. Zooming in and out is a right raw pain in the ass with this software, but if I do manage to get in close, you can see how the low setting still has some noise visible. So let's try middle. Again, we get this pointless animation, and then I'll zoom in to 200%. Let's just drag it so we can see hit. Actually, no, hold on. Let's try that again. Let's go for 200% and drag it to the right. Luminar, drag it to the right. And no, cancel that. Right, Luminar Neo is a no go. I'm not even going to bother with it until I can sort out this magnifying thing. So let's just look at the results from the other four bits of software we've already used. So this is Lightroom Denoise. We can see it's done a great job removing the noise, even at the default setting. I can still see all the fine texture detail in the background that I use, and the skin looks great, and the hair looks great, with plenty of detail and sharpness. Then we have Topaz Denoise AI. 
Now to me, there does seem to be a slight waxy look now to the skin and the hair looks a bit too smoothed out, almost like it's been painted. But what's interesting is how the background looks. Noise has been removed, but also there are patches on the background where there is no texture at all and patches where there is, so I don't like that result. Then we have DxO Pure Raw 3. Now I did use that Deep Prime XD option which from their description promised breathtaking results, but this is way overdone, far too sharp. To be fair, I also did it using the Deep Prime version, not the XD, and this is the result it gave, which again to me looks too sharp, but the background is very patchy, with some smooth areas with no texture at all. Then we had On One, which I think has made this portrait look very waxy, and in fact it's removed all of the texture that was on the background that I used, so I do not like that one. So for me, the winner just has to be the new kid on the block, Adobe Denoise, which does only work on RAW files, which is fine by me, but if we do try to use it on a different file format, we see the message, Denoise is not currently compatible with this file format suggesting that won't always be the case. The results are great, the interface is incredibly simple, and I've not had to pay any extra for it, which is definitely a bonus. Right, that's all from me, so as always, if you've liked this video or you've got something from it, click on that thumb to give us a like, and if you haven't yet, click on subscribe, because it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll catch you in the next video.